Okay, I'm starting it, I'm starting it right now. Let me know when you pick it up, it's live now. When you tell me when you tell me live, then I'll hang up the phone. Okay. We have a. She's up. We up live. We, we're up live. Angela Brown Allen. It's up live. Yeah, she, we, we definitely live. We've already got uh, at least one viewer <laughs> so far. So we definitely live. Hi, right, mom. You got me now? Okay. I'm I'm gonna hang with the phone now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Let's Talk About It. Uh, little technical stuff going on. Uh, I did not announce it. Uh, I did post it on my page that we are now back on the radio uh, after a couple of years of being away from WCVG 1320 AM. Now also 103.9 FM. That's out of Cincinnati, Ohio, Covington, Kentucky area, that whole area. So we're back with them now, uh, trying to uh, go as the Lord leaders to expand uh, getting his word out. So we want to welcome those from the Cincy, Kentucky area, along with our uh, usual uh, audience and fellowship members and all that good stuff who join us for Allen Impact Ministries. We thank you for allowing us to be part of your day, uh, something we don't take lightly or for granted. This message I want to share with you is entitled The Closet. Okay. And I can tell you right now, chances are I may run over uh, for those of you who are checking it out via the radio streaming, uh, 1320thevoice.com or WCVG. You can always catch it later on my personal page, Antonio Allen. You see my picture. Uh, my wife's page, Angela Brown Allen. Also on Allen Impact Ministries YouTube. You can go on there and subscribe for that. Or Allen Impact Ministries on Facebook. Those we always post the messages on either one and both of those just in case we run over, which I'm pretty sure we might. Okay, so our first boss broadcast back being on the radio entitled The Closet. Uh, some scriptures I would like to share with you uh, will be uh, Luke chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, the book from the book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, and from the book of Revelations. Uh, chapter 3 verses 19 through 22 okay and I want to talk about this and I need to take my time amen uh, because um, we're talking about the closet and the closet is not just a physical place mm -hmm. okay when we talk about your mind we're talking about your heart amen right? and, and and usually it's a place or a thing that we uh, want to put things in that we think is secret we you know we hide things, uh, things that scare us, uh, things that have caused trauma, uh, things that you don't want to face, you don't want to deal, you don't want to confront, things you try to forget about, you put them away in a closet, mm -hmm. right? Now, see, in the natural, uh, especially if you're married, uh, uh, I was talking to uh, my pastor, she said she used to go out and do shopping, right? And, and the things that she buy, she would try to hide them in the closet. <laughs> Why? Because she didn't want her husband to know what she went out and did. I, 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 don't, I don't hear Angela saying nothing. Mm, oh, Lord. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, but we're we talking about your mind and your heart. Things that have happened to you in your life. Things that you are in right now that you, you lock away and you don't want to deal with. You know, you refuse to deal with things that scare you. And one of the things I thought about, uh, they did a, a, car, a cartoon called Monsters, Inc. Right? And, and yeah, I'm still a big kid. Uh, and it had the, the cartoon, the premise was about the monsters who kids feared that were in their closet, right? They wouldn't go to sleep until their parents checked their closets, right? So, and that, that's the way uh, these things are in, in your mind and in your heart. They're, they're in there, and, and, and we keep putting things in there, right? And look, we don't want to confront them. Uh, we don't want anyone to know about them. We just want to keep putting them in a place and try to forget about them. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, watch this. Uh, when you put things in there, you, you, that means you're hanging on to them. Mm. You haven't gotten rid of them. 
And some in some cases you don't want to get rid of them. It's, and you just want to keep them and hang on to them. But I want to introduce you to a third thing about the closet. The closet is supposed to be a place of prayer. No longer hiding things from yourself and others, but a place to reveal all things unto God. That's what the closet is supposed to be. Right? The closet, again, what I'm talking about is your heart uh, and, and your mind, which, con which contains a lot of things. The book of Proverbs tells us the heart is from the heart where the issues are. Right? And, and we also know that the mind, we put so much in our mind until sometimes can call breakage in the mind. And they call it a psychotic break. So we have to understand that we have a closet or a closet, your heart and your mind. Uh, there's some things in there that has to be dealt with, right? Because if you never deal with them, then it impacts and affects your soul. Hmm. And not only does it impact and affect your soul, but what about your body? Folks have things happening in their bodies and they don't understand what's happening to their body. It's because of what's in the closet. Right? Not only is it, does it uh, negatively impact the body uh, and, your, and, your, and your mind, but what about the people that you're around? Your relationship, your job, your children, your marriage, because we have so many things that are in our closet. Right? How you treat your wife could be because of what's in your closet. How you treat your husband, your children, how the children treat their parents because of what's in the closet. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, let, let's get into um, let's get into some uh, specifics. The rape that happened to you, the molestation that happened to you, the abandonment that happened to you, right? The rejection that happened to you. The impact is felt not just by you directly, but the others who are around you, uh, directly and indirectly. So if we never take the time to address and to deal with, to confront. And handle the issues that I watch this that has us acting a certain way, uh, thinking a certain way, behaving a certain way. You're being handled by it, and it is affecting and impacting those around you. That's why relationships become strained. Not only just strained, but estranged. Right? Now, some folks they go through a long period of time, you know, and, and they like they have it all together. So they 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 learn how to uh, compartmentalize in their closet. Put this over here, put this over there, and put this over there, but they still never deal with it. Huh? Some folks, they just throw things in there. It's in disarray. You got this on top of this, that on top of that. You know, stuff and things just everywhere thrown in the closet, in the closet. Right? Experiences, uh, whatever. Everything is lumped together, just thrown together in the closet, on top of one another. Right? And what you understand is your past is still there in the closet. And you put it in there and you never dealt with it. Right? Whether it was the abortion, whether it was the assault, whether it was the uh, abusive behavior, whether you've been victim of, victimized by crimes, whether you even committed crimes. All those things are in the same closet, all on top of one another. Some, like I say, some of you try to uh, compartmentalize your stuff, but it's still in there. Good morning, my sister Karen. Good morning, uh, uh, sister Veronica. You, you have these things in there never being dealt with, right? And what you say is, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Why are you bringing it up? You know I want to be reminded about it, right? But yet, you still have dreams about it. And these dreams turn into nightmares. Because of what's in the closet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is heavy for some folk, isn't it? Right. And these things begin to plague you. Amen. Well, you look tired. You look like you're not sleeping. Mm -hmm. You look, you, I don't care about that. You look tired. You look like you're not sleeping. You look drained. You don't look like yourself. Sometimes it's what's in the closet. Mm. Right? And these things begin to haunt you. So you always, uh, are at unrest. You don't have peace. You're not at ease. You're tense. You're frustrated. You're anxious because you have so much in the closet. Yet, even though all this stuff is happening, you still don't have a plan to move beyond what frightens you, 
what, what haunts you, uh, what's, what's plaguing you. You have no plan. You, you still just try to go day by day just getting through the day or talking to somebody. Not realizing that all those things in your closet are causing uh, something much more deeper and greater than grief. Huh? Yeah, it's causing depression. It's causing confusion. It's causing anxiety. It's causing fear. It's causing doubt. It's causing a lot of things. Because the closet, you just keep putting things in there. And what you put in there keeps growing. It's never been dealt with. It's never been handled. It's never been addressed. If you plant something, what happens? It grows. Amen? And until the closet is converted into what it is actually intended for, you're not free. You are not free. You are a prisoner of your past. You are a prisoner of the trauma. You are a prisoner of the actions. You are a prisoner of the rejection. You are a prisoner of the abandonment. You're still a prisoner. You're not free. Can I show you what I'm talking about? Uh, if you if you if you know anything about the news, you listen to the news, then you heard the same things that I've heard. Uh, actor Regina King, she well, she's an actor and director now. Uh, she recently lost her son due to suicide. Right, a uh, beautiful young lady uh, who was uh, Miss America and competed in uh, competed in several uh, pageants. Uh, Chesley Christ, she was a model, a lawyer, very well educated, TV personality committed suicide. Uh, Mosley's J. Mosley, who was an actor from the series of The Walking Dead, committed suicide. All these people were considered successful people. Acting, modeling, educated, whatever. You know, they were considered successful people, but yet something in their closet overtook them and caused them to end their own life. Some people look at suicide as an escape from all those things that are torturing them, those things that are plaguing them, them, them things that are haunting them. And suicide, they think, is, I've lost family members to suicide. This real talk. I, I, I've lost people that I've known, friends and associates, over the years through suicide. And I felt bad uh, when, I, when I began to grow in Christ with, I'm trying to understand. Was there something else I could have done? Was there more what I could have done? You understand? Hmm. And th this is how it affects the people that, that, that are left behind. People who care about you. Who cared about them. Was there anything else I could have done? Because now they're, they're feeling bad. They're feeling guilty. They're hurt. Because the more they loved you. But they couldn't reach you because you were so deep in the closet. You'll find, you'll find these same type of people, watch this, they're battling drugs and battling addiction. Why are they on drugs? You don't understand what's in their closet. Right? Why are they homeless? They don't have to be homeless. You don't understand what's in their closet. They got mental illness because of what's in their closet. And, and, and you know, they, they find themselves staying in abuse. And allow themselves to be in abuse because of what's in their closet. And we don't understand. We don't understand. It's, but for, for some of you, you do understand. And you're wondering, what else can I do? Well, I, the, the short answer is Jesus Christ. That's the short answer. But how do we get them to Christ? That's a whole other thing. Because if we can get them to Christ... And some folks have been to church and still haven't found answers. And when we get to uh, Luke 12, 1, uh, 1 and 3, let's go there now. You're going to find out what I'm saying. It's going to mess you up. Luke 12, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, In the meantime, when, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trolled one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, 
and that which ye have spoken in the ear in clauses shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Let's look at this for me. This is Jesus in red, if you got the uh, King James Version. Now this 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 thing that the corruption and the and the the things that hurt and damage was spoken in private amongst the Pharisees. The Pharisees was the ones in, that were uh, supposed to be religious leaders over the people. So they watch this. They were the ones that was causing the pain. They were the ones who was causing hurt. They were the ones who were causing damage, and they did it behind closed doors. So watch this. Some of you are going through things that that came down. Through the pastor and the preachers, they came down through your teachers and your principals, and, and it caused the trial. These are things that you have in your your closet. People who were in authority, people people who weren't in charge, they're the ones who caused the the damage to things that's in, in your closet. Here in Detroit, a few years ago, we had a woman that killed her own daughter and placed her in the freezer, and she was in the freezer for over a year. She had other children, but she killed the daughter. And the door was in the freezer for over a year. How did that impact the, other, the rest of her children? We don't know yet because it's, it's only been a couple of years. But that had to cause some kind of trauma, don't you think? Knowing your sister's dead in the freezer. So we have people who are in, 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 in places of um, authority who are causing all kinds of damage. And this is why I pulled this out. And they, 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 they spoke of the damage behind closed doors. And the damage that they caused hurt you, and now you're carrying it in your closet because you don't know if you should go to God or not because you trusted a man or woman of God. You don't. You, it's okay. It's okay. You don't. You don't have to agree with me. But we are. I can tell you. Uh, what, let, let's take today's headlines. We had a pastor. I believe it was down south. Him and his wife had people locked in their basements, saying that there was supposed to be a adult foster care home, but they really had them as prisoners getting money for them because they were considered uh, physically or mentally disabled or a combination there, thereof, and it was mistreating them. So that damage came from where? Basically a modern-day Pharisee, right? This is messing somebody up. You had a pastor in Tennessee, supposed to be over a mega church, got caught cheating. Not by just one person, but by several people, even some from his own church. So he called a church meeting, right? And they thought he was going to address it. They thought he was going to apologize, but he didn't do that. He really didn't apologize at all. He said, I'm going to go on a sabbatical. And it's like, what does that mean? Not remorse, not I'm sorry, not I was wrong. No apologies to the wife who he was cheating on. With a member of the church. So we have people in places that are causing damage. You saw what happened. Uh, this country is still divided, not because Trump divided it, but he, he, he played on, and it still is, putting out lies. Lies cause harm. Lies cause damage. Lies cause division. So you have people in these places that are, that are causing, and it's wearing on the people's mind, it's wearing on the people's hearts. So here we have this, and Jesus said, beware. This hypocrisy. My, my, if I came on here preaching hate, if I came on here to get you uh, to be divided, I'm going against what the Word of God says. That's why I said get into your good Bible-based church. Not somebody who, who know how to quote Scripture. Not somebody who look like. Not somebody who sound like. But first of all, somebody who's actually putting the work to live like. The person who's actually putting in the work to live like, those are the ones you say, okay, Lord, is this the one I need to watch this walk with? Is this the one I need to listen to? That's going to help me in my relationship with you. That's going to feed me. Jesus told Peter. He asked him several times. He said, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Jesus. Peter, does thou love me? Do you love me? Peter got, Peter got agitated. Look, you, I, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. I mean, come on now. For real, it's me. It's Peter. I love you. What, you, what, what, what are you going with? Where are you going with this? He said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Why? Because you're going to have some Pharisees. You're going to have some hypocrites. You're going to have some liars that's going to give them corruption. And then when they eat corruption, what do they become? What do they become when they eat corruption? If I fed you nothing but fast food, Coney Island, uh, all, McDonald's, uh, that's all I fed you, what will you become? Oh my God, my God, are you getting this? See, somebody needs to change their diet right now. 
and stop eating what they're not supposed to be and start eating what they're supposed to be. What are you supposed to be eating? Love, peace, joy. These are the things that the children of God eat. They digest it and they're able to put it back out. But it has to come from those who understand about the closet. I'm trying to get you to come out the closet. If I can get you to come out the closet, then we can convert the closet to what it's intended for. And then we can go safely into the closet. Y'all are not talking to me. Uh, uh, let me. Let me go to another scripture. Let me go to another scripture here. Let, let's go to uh, the book of Matthew chapter 6. The book of Matthew chapter 6. Go down to verse 5, please. Verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues. And in the corner uh, of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now you, you got to get this. You, you have to get this. I want you to get this. We have a lot of folks who just love being in front of folk. That's their addiction. When they can get folks around them and they get the, oh, oh Lord, Jesus. He's Lord said they have their reward. They got the audience. Huh? They, they, they got their feel good moment. Huh? But for those who understand, it's about souls. I don't care if it's one, I don't care if it's ten, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, I don't care if it's countless. But if we only got just the one, I'm going to pray just as diligently, just as sincerely, just as. Um, uh, 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 fire uh, uh, as if there's a, a million folks. Why? Because I, I care about your soul. And that's why I'm bringing you this message, something that's not popular, something that's not talked about in church, to trying to get you to understand you got to address these things in your closet so we can use the closet with the, for what the purpose is. Not to hide things, but to go in there where you can reveal things. You're, you're not talking to me. So he told him, he said, look, 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 look. The hypocrites. The hypocrites, they, they got their reward. They got their audience. That's their reward. They love being in front of people. Huh? That's narcissistic. That's, that's self. Amen? They don't, they don't care about the people. I just love being in front of the people. Y'all not talking to me. He said, but, 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 but I want you to go into the closet, your secret place. And, why, and you, I, I need you to get this. See, when, when you understand that your mind and your heart belong to Christ, that's why you go back to the, the greatest two commandments. Jesus said, well, the greatest two commandments. He said, you must love God with all. All what? All of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. Why? Because I need you to give that to me. We're going to clean that place out. Why? Because it's going to be a time where it's going to have to be just you and me and me and you. Uh, this, watch this. This is a place where you can't go with your husband and pray. I just need you. Uh, this is a place where you can't go with your children and pray. I just need you. This is a place you can't go with your best friend. I, uh, I just need you. This is a place you can't go to with your prayer partner. I just need you. So you can't go in there where you got all this other stuff in there. So I'm trying to get you today, today to understand. I'm going to get this other stuff out of there so I can go in there and use it for what the purpose is intended. And that's the purpose where it's going to be just me and God, sweet communion. Uh, there's going to be me and God where we're going to set me apart. There's going to be me and God where I can tell him all things. Uh, there, there's some things he's going to tell me that's not for anybody else except for me and him. Ah, to, to some places you can't go with me. Mm. You can't go with me into my secret place. I, I, you know, I'm married, but she can't go with, go with me sometimes into my secret place. Uh, I love my children. I love my grandchildren, but they can't go with me. Into my, so, so I, I keep that place clean. That's a holy place. My mind, your heart tells her that's a holy place. It's not a damaged place. It's not a corrupted place. It's not a foul place. But I'm turning it today into a holy place. Y'all not talking to me. So, so, so we're we going to go in here. We're not looking for a crowd. See, when we go in here, it's about intimacy. How much, how much intimacy when you're worried about a crowd? You, you, there is none. But when it's just you and the Lord, you're concerned about the intimacy because that's your relationship. See, all those people who, who, who are hurting and, and struggling and committing suicide, I, I'm wondering, do they have a relationship with the Lord? I'm asking, do they have a relationship with the Lord? There, there's, it's not being reported that they do. He wants a relationship with you. That's why he said, come unto me. All ye who are heavy laden. You have problems. You have weights. You have worries. Come unto me. He said, learn of me. Learn about me. I have exactly what you knew. That's why you used to hear the old folks say he's a burden bearer. Y'all not going to talk to me today. Ah, he said he's a burden bearer. He's a heavy load share. Did, did, did anybody ever remember those old 
Okay, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. That's what my, my old pastor, Pastor Queen here, she said, don't you let nobody use your mind. Because if you let them use your mind, that means you don't have one. When it's a terrible thing to lose your mind, it's a terrible thing to, to have a, a heart that's filled with worry and grief, heaviness, sorrow. You start thinking, everybody against me. Everybody talking about No, 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 no. You need to get that stuff out of there. How do I do it? Coming to Christ. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him. Lord, I have a problem. Lord, I have problems. Lord, I have some issues. Lord, I'm in this circumstance. I'm coming to you. I've been hurt. I've, and from that hurt, I've, I've been damaged. But I heard you can heal. I heard you can make whole. I'm coming to you, Lord, my God. Well, okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me talk about me, and I'm going to get back into this. Uh, I went through uh, being molested as a child. And I didn't talk about it until uh, 1995 when I was 29 years old, almost 30 years old. You understand? And it helped me, once I started talking about it, it helped me to understand why I was acting the way I acted, why I thought the way I thought. You got me? You hold so much stuff in, in your closet. You don't know why you're acting the way you're acting, why you think, until. Huh? I, I went through family rejection. Yes, I did. 1997. So 1995, I started learning how to deal with being molested. 1997, I went through family rejection. Y'all not talking to me. So he says, back to back to, yeah, until we get, the, the, look, the enemy does not want you to be free. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if, I, he, if he can take over your mind, if he can take over your heart, if he has you afraid to look inside yourself, if he, oh, y'all not, y'all got to get this. If he has you afraid to look inside yourself. You say, what does that mean? Well, let's go back to the scripture again. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Is that scripture? Yeah. Over, or it said, watch this. In Genesis, it said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. But if he, the enemy has seduced you and, also, and the things have happened to you, so you don't want to see yourself, then you'll never see Christ. You got to get this. Uh, so you tell the enemy today, you're going to stop lying to me. You, you, you're not in charge of me. I don't belong to you. I belong to Jesus Christ. I may be hurting. I may not understand everything, but I, I heard the word today. I know who I belong to. He's the one who made me. You're the one who's trying to destroy me. You got to come out right now in the name of Jesus. You got to come out right now in the name of Jesus. You have no more power over me. You have no more control over me. I will not allow you to have my destiny. I will not allow you to have you to my, my promise and my future. It belongs to Jesus Christ. Am I talking to anybody? You coming out of depression today. Somebody going to get free today. You will no longer have negative thoughts of hurting yourself or hurting anyone else today. If you receive this word today in the name of Jesus. Tell somebody I'm coming out. Yeah, my God, my God. Tell somebody I'm coming out. Yeah, you know, I'm coming out the closet. Watch this. When I come out the closet, that stuff got to go. Watch this. So I can go in the closet and begin to reveal things to Christ instead of conceal things. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. This is, what we, this is what we're dealing with today. Oh, my God. See, you, how are you going to be free? If your past still holds you prisoner. I learned through the word. That I don't have to be ashamed of anything that I've been through. Hmm? I've learned that. I'm sharing that with you. You don't have to be ashamed of anything that you've been through. Why? Because it will serve a purpose for your future and for your destiny. It will serve a purpose for your future and your destiny. Yes, the abuse. It will serve a purpose. Uh, sometimes you go through things that's really not about you. See, I can, I can watch this. Because I had suicidal thoughts, I can, I can talk to somebody who has suicidal thoughts. Uh, because I've been through molestation, I can talk to somebody who, who's been, been molested. Uh, because I've been through, unfortunately, more than one. I can talk to somebody about failed marriages. I can, I can talk to them. I can reach them now. Because I got the experience. And watch this. I turned it over to the Lord. And the song said, he worked it out. But you, there's no turnover when you keep it in the closet. There's no turnover. Only thing that's getting turned over is your mind. Only thing that's getting turned over is your heart. 
and it becomes hardened to the point where you begin become numb. Uh, you're looking for a way out. And the way out is usually self-harm or hurting others. But the Lord said, no, I came that they may have life and that more abundantly. I came that they may have life and that more abundantly. Are you ready to live? Yeah. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So you're going to open up those closets. You're going to open up the closet. Come on in, Lord. Where the spirit of the Lord is, uh, you're going to free me today. Where, where the spirit of the Lord is, you're going to free me today. Uh, I, I'm ready to be free today and not haunted. I'm ready to be free today and not plagued. I'm ready to be free today so I can live in the name of Jesus and not exist. Not just trying to go from day to day. Not talking about I'm a survivor. I'm going from, from victim to victorious. Am I talking to anybody today? <laughs> my God, my God, my God. Uh, let, let, let me keep moving. For those of you, my time is up on the radio. But like I said, you, you can keep keep up with me on, on the Facebook page uh, and YouTube afterwards. But I, I got to get through this. Amen? And stick with me. Stick with me. Let us, let us go to uh, the book of Revelations, uh, chapter 3, verse 19 through 22. You can't miss the book of Revelation. It's the last one, right? Uh, chapter 3, go to verse 19. Watch this. As many as I love, I rebuke and, I, and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Let's stop. When you're going through things, it's not always about to hurt you. Hmm? Sometimes we have done things that we really didn't know we were doing, or sometimes we know we did them. And the Lord said, I'm trying to get your attention because I need you to repent. If you want to be free, it starts there, right there. Lord, I repent of all of my sins, known and unknown. Lord, I repent of all of my sins, known and unknown. And I, I know you're doing this because you love me, not because you hate me. You're doing this because you're trying to teach me and show me something, not because you're trying to just hurt me and, and, and kill me. Uh, you came that I may have life. So I, I have to go through this. Uh, I shared with you, uh, some of you, that I went to the hospital uh, in September of last year. Okay, uh, it started with kidney stones. And where the kidney stone was, uh, was very painful and it caused an infection in my kidney, my right kidney. Okay, and from the kidney infection in the kidney stone, uh, I have, I was diagnosed with a large prostate years ago. But then it caused a prostate infection. And because I couldn't uh, urinate the way I need to urinate, it caused a bladder infection. So I had all this going on at the same time. And I can't, I, I can't even begin to put into words uh, the, the pain, <laughs> okay? And it was very painful. Medication, all that stuff still, it was very painful, excruciating pain. And the Lord spoke to me because I told him, I said, look, I'm your servant. I'm your child. I, I don't understand this. He said, just go through it. I was crying tears, not because of the pain, but because of what the Lord spoke to me. He said, I just need you to go through it. And, it, and it, he brought back what David, David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, it comforts me. And what is the rod and the staff? The rod is not just to, to whoop the uh, enemy, but it's also going to chastise the child. Y'all not talking to me. Wait a minute, I'm already in a dark place, and you're going you gonna to whoop me there? You got to get this. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to chastise you there because, watch this, I didn't want you to come here, but since you're here, I'm, I'm going to make sure you don't want to come back here. You're going to make this valley experience your last experience because I'm taking you up out of here to a better place. If you understand what, what the rod is for, watch this, the staff is letting me know that you're still in charge, Lord. Ah, so even though I'm in this dark place in my mind, I'm in this dark place in my heart, the Lord still has the staff say, I'm still in charge. You're still my child. Follow me. Did anybody get that? Did you, did, 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 you, did you get that? So where you are right now in your thinking, where you're right now in your feelings, there's still a rod, there's still a staff, and the Lord still loves you. All you have to do is surrender to him. That's why I say repent. Well, what am I repenting for? You, you may not even know you're sin because of the way you were thinking and the place you were at in your mind. You, you probably didn't even think about it. You just reacted and did it. I want you to get this. Okay, let's try it like this. Let's try it like this. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, uh, 11, 14, 14, verse somewhere around in there. It says, if my people 
who are called by my name mm, will humble themselves. Before you pray, before you ask me for anything, he said, humble yourselves and turn away. And when you then when you pray, he said, I will heal. I will heal. That's a promise from the Lord. I will heal. The Lord wants you to be healed. That's why I read for you. He said, above all, I want you to prosper and be in good health. Above all, I want you to prosper and be in good health. Above all, I want you to prosper and be in good health. And that word prosper has nothing to do with money. It's about spiritual maturity. If I can get you to be spiritually mature, guess what I can do for your mental? If I can get you to be spiritually mature, guess what I can do for your emotions? If I can get you to be spiritually mature, guess what I can do for your life? I can get you to abundant life. I can get you to everlasting life. I can get you to eternal life. I can get you to a peaceful life. I can get you to a joy-filled life. But we got to take care of this closet stuff. Can we take care of the closet stuff today? I know. Some of you say, I never heard a message like this. I, I, and this is not me patting myself on the back. That's because I know who gave it to me to bless you at the, such a time as this. Hmm? They blame the suicide rate. They don't want to blame everything on COVID. I'm not giving COVID credit for that. No, this is a time, and I, I shared this with you, those who follow this ministry. The Lord said this year it's about spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. Tell someone, we got to grow up. We got to grow up. If you want to go up, you got to grow up. Huh? If you want the next level, you got to grow up. Now, if you want greater, you want better, you got to grow up. I'm not, you can't, I'm no longer blaming anyone or anybody. No, no. I'm still in the Lord's hands. You're still in the Lord's hands. That's the way we have to look. I'm still in your hands, Lord. What do I need to do? What do I need to do so I can flourish? What do I need to do so I can prosper? What do I need to do to be a better servant? What do I need to do so I can just be better to serve you and to please you? Let's, 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 let's empty out this closet. Let's empty out this closet. This closet of things we didn't want to face. Closet of things we didn't want to talk about. Closet where things we lied about. Y'all not talking to me. Hmm? You can take as many pills as you want to. The stuff's still in the closet. You can smoke as much as you want to smoke. The stuff's still in the closet. You can drink as what you want to drink. The stuff is still in the closet. Well, I'm talking to somebody today. I am talking to somebody today. This is for those who are ready to come out the closet. Those who are ready to be victorious over their lives. Those who want the promises of God. And not the plagues and then talk about the curses. No, we, we're done with that. We are done with that. The Bible says you are more than conquerors. But the first thing we're going to do is going to conquer this. Conquer this. And, give, and how do we do that? I'm going to submit it to Christ. All of it. All of it. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be ashamed to tell God everything. He already knows. He already knows. But, but, but have you heard enough word today? Enough encouragement today? It's okay, Lord. Here it is. Oh, my God. My God. Have you heard enough today? It's okay, Lord. Here, here's all of it. I'm not going to hold nothing back. I want all from you, so I have to give you all of, mm -hmm, all of me. Here it is. And what will the Lord do? When he said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you, he's going to take all of that. And we're going to start the process of healing. We're going to start the process of deliverance. Start. Y'all not talking to me. Uh, well, if you don't believe me, try me. Try it. Try it. Try it. I don't care if it's from your childhood and you're 60 years old. He don't care about that. We're going to take care of it right now. Huh? I don't care if it's just last week. We're going to take care of it right now. Try it. I, I, I challenge you to try it. Mm. There's some more stuff I wanted to, to get into, but I, I, I'm praying and confident that enough was said uh, that, that would do something. Amen? Again, uh, we're, we're on the radio, back on the radio, uh, WCVG. 1320, also 103.9 out of Cincinnati and Covington area. <coughs> we thank you for this time that you shared. If you know somebody who can use this message, I'm asking, share it. 
Share. It doesn't cost you anything. Share the message. If you want to sow into this ministry, please feel free to do so. How can you do that? Two ways. We're on Giblify, Allen Impact Ministries. Also, we're on Cash App. Elder AE. Elder AE on Cash App. Listen. This word, I labored. I thought about it. And I prayed about it. Okay? Because I want you to be blessed. I want you to be healed. It's time to grow. Huh? It's time to come out of being wounded. It's time to come out of being injured. No. Full recovery. Full recovery. Deliverance. Healing. In the name of Jesus. Huh? We're, going, we're not going to be the walking wounded. Sorry. No. You're going to learn how to put on your armor. And you're going to learn how to, you're going to, learn how to conquer. And be more than conquerors. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hmm? That's why we have we have weapons at our disposal. <laughs> Y'all not saying nothing. You have weapons at your disposal that make sure that you have the victory. That's and it starts with Jesus Christ. And the next part is you coming unto and into Jesus Christ. Amen. So until the next time, we pray God's biggest, best, and boldest blessings upon you and yours. Keep us in prayer as we do for you. We love you come out the closet so we can convert that thing into what it is intended for your secret place for you to commune with God so you can keep increasing you and strengthening you in Jesus name, amen